To shoot film, you will need a camera, some film, and maybe a tripod. To load the film, you lift the button on top of the camera and insert it. Then, you pull the film out of its cartridge and fit it into the winding mechanism on the right side of the camera. Make sure that the film is winding through properly, then close the back. After closing the back, take two more photos. From this point on, do not open the back, otherwise all your photos will get ruined. Next, you dial in the film speed to tell the light meter which ISO you are using and you are all set to go. But wait, how does camera actually work? Essentially, all cameras work the same. There is light sensitive film at the back of the camera which will get exposed. Once you press the shutter, the mirror of the viewfinder flips up and the shutter opens, letting in light. After each shot, the film has to be winded so that another part of it can be exposed. Keep in mind that all the principles explained in this video also apply to any DSLR camera. The only difference is that a DSLR has a digital sensor instead of the film. When you take a photograph, you control how much light enters the camera. Let's take a look at an example. This image is properly exposed. If too much light enters, the image will be overexposed, meaning it will be too bright. If too little light enters, the image will be underexposed, meaning it will be too dark. This balancing act is called exposure, and there are three parts to it. The ISO, the shutter speed and the aperture. ISO describes the light sensitivity of your film. Photographic film is a strip of plastic with a coating containing small light sensitive silver crystals. The coating will gradually darken if left exposed to light. This creates an invisible image in the coating which can be chemically developed into a visible photograph later on. When you take a photo, the camera's shutter opens letting in light. It stays open for as long as you've set it to which usually are fractions of a second. Then it closes, cutting off the light. This period of time is called the shutter speed. Generally, you have to use slower shutter speeds when it is darker and faster shutter speeds when it is brighter. Shutter speed also creates two visual effects in your photo. Firstly, slow shutter speeds blur movement. This is because the shutter stays open for a long time, allowing objects to move while the image is being exposed. As a rule of thumb, you will need the tripod to prevent camera shake for shutter speeds less than 1 60th of a second. Secondly, fast shutter speeds freeze movement. Subjects will appear frozen when photographed with fast shutter speeds because nothing in front of the camera has time to move while the shutter is open. The aperture controls how much light enters the camera. It works exactly the same way as the pupil in our eyes, which opens in darker conditions and closes in brighter conditions. The size of the opening, namely the diameter, is measured in f-stops. At first, it can be confusing that a higher number means a smaller opening and vice versa. However, the f in f-stop stands for the focal length of a lens and the slash stands for a fraction. Therefore, a small fraction like the focal length divided by 2.8 means a higher number and thus a bigger diameter than a high fraction like the focal length divided by 11. As well as controlling the amount of light entering the camera, aperture also creates a visual effect. By changing the aperture, the depth of field, meaning the error being in focus, changes as well. You can achieve a shallow depth of field by choosing a low f-stop, which means that the aperture is wide open. This will make your subject stand out and therefore is often used in portraits. On the other hand, by choosing a high f-stop, which means that the aperture is almost closed, you can achieve a high depth of field. This is often used for landscapes in order to have everything in focus. Here's the thing, as you change the aperture, the shutter speed will need to be adjusted as well in order to keep the same exposure. To compare shutter speed and aperture, there's a thing called stop. A stop means that you're doubling or halving the amount of light reaching the film. 
Doubling or halving the shutter speed means an increase or decrease of one stop of exposure. The same concept applies to film speed. A cartridge with ISO 100 will need twice as much light than a roll of ISO 200 film. The aperture is a bit more complex. Like we covered earlier, f-stops are fractions of the focal length which determine the diameter of the opening. To double the amount of light passing through the lens, not the diameter has to be doubled, but the area of the aperture opening. The surface of a circle is calculated by the radius squared times pi, respectively the diameter divided by 2 squared times pi. To double or half the area, you have to multiply or divide the diameter, meaning the f-stop, with the square root of 2. For example, going from f2.8 up to f4 is a decrease of one stop because 4 equals 2.8 multiplied with the square root of 2. Now you can easily compare and adjust your settings. So let's say you open your aperture from f4 up to f2.8 in order to get a more shallow depth of field. This means that you get more light namely by one stop. Therefore you should have your shutter speed, for example going from 1 30th of a second down to 1 60th of a second. For all of you who are shooting digitally, you can also adjust your ISO, but you should always keep your ISO as low as possible, since a higher sensitivity means more noise in your photo. You might have asked yourself what all these letters mean on top of your mode dial. The M stands for manual mode, where you are responsible for shutter speed and aperture in order to get the proper exposure. It can be very time consuming to keep up with the light meter and most of the time it is not necessary to shoot in full manual mode. To help you out with the exposure, there is a light meter built into the camera. It will give you the recommended shutter speed for the used aperture. Keep in mind that you might not be able to shoot every shutter speed with every aperture. For example, in a dark environment you can't shoot with fast shutter speeds and so on. When you know what depth of field you want for your photo, then aperture priority marked with an A on the dial is best. For example, if you're shooting a landscape, you will likely want the whole image to be in focus and that's why you'll want to choose a smaller aperture. The camera will then set the right shutter speed for a proper exposure. The S on the dial stands for shutter priority mode. This mode is the opposite of aperture priority, which means that now you choose the shutter speed and the camera will set the right aperture to give you a proper exposure. This mode is handy when you know you want to use a certain shutter speed to capture motion. For focusing, there's a focus aid called split prism. It pushes part of the image to the right and part of it to the left if the image isn't in focus. When the focus is dead on, the two images come together. One last thing to mention is that by looking through the viewfinder, you won't see a change in brightness when you adjust the aperture. This is because the camera will always be on the widest opening of the aperture and only close it just before exposing the film. However, if you need to check how the aperture affects the depth of field, you can do it by pressing the depth of field preview button. Once you've finished your roll of film, you will have to click the button at the bottom of the camera to release it. Then you roll it back into its light tight cartridge by using the winding mechanism. Wind it back by turning clockwise until you stop feeling resistance. Now you can remove the film. To get to the negative, you'll have to process it which I will cover in the next video.